have that seam no matter what. If you're having to bring two pieces together, now what you could do... You can centerfold box it? Yeah, you can centerfold box it. That's not a basic technique that I can sit here and explain to her. Um, well, she need, she's going to need to get someone to do it. Yeah. All right. Because that's not, to make that, that seam disappear and become, that's a special effects trick that we do. And it's not an easy, we can show you, but it's something I'd have to sit here and work and with. You do it, and you're going to do that with steam. Yeah. And you're going to do that with steam and, uh, 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 and a paraffin glue. But a paraffin glue job, and that's not a... That's not a beginner's technique in any way, shape, or No, because that glue and you can mess up your project real quick. You also poison yourself. You're not careful. I'll Which be I kind fun to do it then. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of girl, right there. Poison, cool. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> but when you're doing when you're doing a box like that, you're actually you you actually are uh, you're, there, you see no visible seams on the outside because the whole thing is pressed, and then um, because. What you're doing is, if you are going to have it tooled, if you're going to have it tooled, you tool everything prior to um, uh, prior to pressing it, and then you forgive anything that's lost in the pressing. Real quick, we're running out. We got three minutes real fast. Uh, the other thing that Candy has for those of you who want to go wild west with the rest of us, um, yes. you can go down and they carry uh, in the back where the books are at. You can go get uh, historical recreation patterns. These are anywhere from three to seven bucks. They're not expensive. Um, and I've got every holster pattern that Tandy makes. The Law Dogs, the Dodge City, the White Herb. Um, one trick though, and they'll go through and they'll, they'll give you hits and tips and tricks on how to do things. When you get them, don't cut out the piece from the piece of paper. Lay it down, trace it, that way you still got, and this is what they come looking like, guys. Um, and you'll trace it out, it even gives you the tracing marks for, to do the tooling. Uh, especially on like the Jesse James and the Wyatt Earp ones, they'll give you the honest to God historical reproduction so you can tool in the same exact tooling design he had on his, on his holsters. Um, but just trace them out. Don't cut them out of the papers you do. You just lost that pattern. And six months from now, when Fritz comes over to your house and wants you to make him a gun belt, you're going to have to go get another pattern because you can't find all the pieces of the one you made. That's how it's the same pattern we use for our gun belts. Okay. Um, you guys got any questions? No, there's Fritz. Okay. I, I bought a, an off-road bike, you know, the off-road bike armor. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you kind of the base for an armor kind. God, who would ever use off for a bike armor for this? Uh, I use. I got an inspiration from someone. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, but uh, I was thinking of the type of leather I could use. The, you know the the mount over. To mount over like I've done on mine. Yeah. Um, I usually use six seven, either six seven or seven eight. It's usually the best to do it because you're at that point you're you want to be able to mold it, and you're really truly looking for a look. So going, unless you just want that, that, that bulky, you know, I'm going to go run through that wall because I'm bored kind of look, uh, which we do do. Do um, <laughs> do. Do do. Uh, I would use six, seven, and then just fold it. And, you know, kind of what we do is we'll take manila folders, manila folders, make out all of our armor on the manila folders to make sure it's going to move where it's supposed to and sit where it's supposed to before you take the transfer of the leather. And that's what I do. If you need any help, let me know when uh, we get back. I'll show you some of the tricks that we used on ours. Um, like one of the things with using the BMX uh, armor or motocross armor, like we do for our gear, is when you drill your hole through that plastic, line the back up with another piece of leather. Otherwise, that rivet or the, the Chicago screw will end up cracking and popping it. And it'll pop right off. Especially as hard as we treat our gear, putting it in and out, loading it out of vehicles all the time, you'll end up blowing your armor apart. Like I've got some pieces on mine, I've got, or I've got a crack that's running all the way across, underneath the leather and all the way across, just from where it's gotten compressed in the vehicle. Are you using shoe gum on any of yours? Mm -hmm. Okay. But our stuff, I mean, we just being thrown around. Like I said, we take our armor, you can pick our armor up and chunk it across the room, but it's just being compressed so many times and the van going all over the places has, has cracked it. Got any other questions?
comments. There you go, Jeff. You're talking about the dying weather. How about the polishing? You're getting to like a nice solid shine. Nice solid shine. Um, you can, uh, most of the black gear that you'll see, like today when I put my other armor on, is USMC black. Um, once you get, when you put it on, you'll get this really nasty, foggy look to it. Uh, and I brought one of my buffing wool. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? This is uh, lamb's wool. Is one of the, is one of the ones you can once you dye your stuff out. Uh, you can you can buff all of the dyes to a really high, nice, pretty sheen. Buffing them out this way. Another ancient Chinese trick. Because I am all when you've been working on leather for 12 to 18 hours, you go for a trick you can get your hands on. Um, Power drill. Aha! Go down to the auto parts place and get you a buffing wheel. Um, put it on your drill and cut your time down in half with buffing out your leather and you can get it to a point where basically, because the other thing you're doing is you're heating it up and getting it to, to lock into the leather a little bit and you can get a really nice pretty shine out of it. Um, get two of them. If you're going to be doing a lot of projects where you got black and another color, use a black one for black one and the other one for the other colors because the second you take this one you go over your reds or your yellows or your blues they got black it. and treat it just like your boots did you did with your boots in the military yep sign, sign, sign. you shine them up just like yeah just like you did your, your military you boots i sit there we yeah we sit there we take our um our armor and we'll take a main coil and sit there and main coil our armor out and one it makes it sorta of, kinda of waterproof even though we've got holes everywhere but uh... it keeps it from retaining water so like if it's we're outside and we get rained on it doesn't start losing its shape again uh... we also seal our seal all our armor but you, you treat it just like you do your boots when you're in the military so any other questions guys thank you for listening to us for two hours we appreciate it if you need anything feel free to email us we'll try and get the question answered for you uh, y'all have any business?